If you've been looking for a way to play backups of your favorite PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, and even PlayStation Portable games, this video is for you. Through the power of Irisman and the simple to follow guide, you'll be playing backups of your favorite games in no time at all. Fire up your PlayStation 3 and your PC because you're about to learn something new. You'll need either a jailbroken PlayStation 3 with custom firmware or a PlayStation 3 running PS3 Hen. If you have custom firmware, you'll be able to run PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, and PlayStation Portable games. But fear not, if you have a PS3 running PS3 Hen, you'll still be able to run PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 1 games using this guide. The only thing you'll need outside of your PlayStation 3 and your computer is a USB-A drive. You'll want to drive with a lot of storage for this guide because some of the files for the content you might want to copy over to your system can be fairly large in size. First step, download Iris Man from the PS3 Brewology website. I have it linked for you in the video description. On that page, scroll down until you see the listings for downloads. Inside the download section, right underneath file name, you'll see the listing that says Iris Man Full. That's the one that you want to download. Follow that listing over to the right side of the screen and click Downloads to get the latest package file downloaded to your computer. Next up, download GUI Format. I have this link for you in the video description. It will let you format that large volume USB drive in FAT32 format. Click the picture in the middle of the screen, and if prompted by your browser, click Keep to download the file. Finally, if you're running a PS3 on custom firmware and you want to play backups of PSP games, download the PS3 Remasters Launcher Fixed software. This is also linked for you in the video description. It's this listing right here. Be sure to pick the correct listing so that things work correctly. Follow this listing over to the right side of the screen and click on the download button to grab the latest version of the package file and download it to your computer. Before you can move those package files over to your USB drive and ultimately your PlayStation 3, you'll need to format that USB drive in FAT32 format. To that end, right click on File Explorer and open your Downloads folder. Inside Downloads, you'll see the two package files and you'll also see GUI format. I'm going to start here by just taking this window and dragging it and dropping it over to the left side of the screen to snap it into place. Go ahead and insert your USB-A drive into your computer. Once the File Explorer window for that drive appears, you can take that window and just drag it over to the right side of the screen and snap it into place. You'll need to pay very close attention to the drive letter designation for that drive. In this case, it's drive letter J called subscribe. You'll want to make note of the drive letter because if you format the wrong drive letter in the next step, you might format your Windows boot drive and well, that would suck. Once you've identified the drive letter of your USB drive in Windows, close out its File Explorer window. Now that you know which drive to format, let's get it formatted. Go back over to Downloads and double click on GUI Format. Then at the UAC prompt, click Yes to continue. Before you use GUI Format, make sure to close out any open instances of File Explorer or the program will not format your drive. Before you format anything, take a look in the top left corner of the GUI Format interface. Make sure that this drive letter matches the drive letter of your USB drive. In this case, they do match, but if they don't, you'll need to click this drop down. Then select the letter of the drive that matches your USB drive letter on your computer. Once you've verified your drive letter and all File Explorer windows are closed, come down to Start in the bottom right corner and click on it. Then at the confirmation window that appears in the middle of the screen, click OK. Your USB-A drive will now be formatted in FAT32 format. Once the process is complete, come down to Close in the bottom right corner and click on it to close out the GUI format software. Let's get those package files copied over to the USB drive. Right click on File Explorer and select Downloads to reopen your Downloads folder. Just like I did before, I'm going to drag and drop this window and snap it into place on the left side of the screen. You can open a second instance of File Explorer, and in this case I'm going to open this PC. I'll drag this window and snap it over to the right side. From inside this PC, scroll down until you see the drive listing for your USB storage. In this case, it's drive letter J. Double click on it and you'll be at the root of your USB drive. Now all you have to do is just select both of the package files and drag and drop them directly onto the root of your USB storage. You don't need these package files in your downloads folder any longer. You can right click on one of them as they're both already highlighted. 
Then left click on the delete icon to send them to the recycle bin. And remember, anything that you delete and send to the recycle bin is still archived there in case you need it. GUI format's a very powerful tool, and I recommend keeping it somewhere on your computer. In this case, I already have it backed up on the computer, so I'll right click on it and select the delete icon to send it to the recycle bin. For now, you're done with your computer. You can close out any open instances of File Explorer in Windows, remove the USB drive from your computer, insert it into the rightmost USB port on your PS3, and turn on your system. If you have a slim or super slim model that's running PS3 HEN, go ahead and activate HEN at this time. Let's get those package files installed on your system. From the cross media bar of your PlayStation 3, slide over with the D-pad until you get to the Games tab. Scroll down in the Game tab until you see the listing called Package Manager. Select it with the X button. Scroll down in this submenu until you see the listing that says Install Package Files and select that with X. Then scroll down in the sub sub menu until you see the listing that says standard. That's your USB drive. For all models of the PlayStation 3 system, install the Iris Man package file. Select it with the X button to install it to your system. It only takes a moment or so in real time. Once the process is complete, press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. If you have a PlayStation 3 on custom firmware and you'd like to play PlayStation Portable backups, go right back through that same process. Package Manager, Install Package Files, Standard, and this time, scroll down to the PSP Remasters Launcher and select it with X to install it. Once the process is complete, once again press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. Let's launch Iris Man for the first time. Scroll down to the new Iris Man icon on the cross media bar and select it with X. The first time you launch Iris Man, you'll be asked to calibrate the width of the application to the width of your display. In this case, everything was fine right out of the box, so all I had to do here was press X. But make any adjustments that are necessary for your own display, then press the X button. You'll be prompted to select where you want to copy games over. In this case, the default listing is for the Games folder, and that works perfectly fine since we're going to use custom folders in a minute anyway. Select Yes with X, and you'll now be treated to, well, a bunch of nothing. That's because we haven't copied any games over to Iris Man yet. Let's fix that. For now, press the PlayStation button on your controller and then select Quit Game with the X button. At the confirmation prompt that appears, slide over to Yes and select Yes with the X button. This will take you back to the cross media bar. Remove the USB drive from the USB port on your PlayStation 3 and insert it back into an open USB port on your computer. Once the USB drive is recognized by your computer, you'll need to reformat it. In this case, I'm going to reformat it into NTFS format as it works really well inside Iris Man. Locate the listing for your USB drive, right click on it, and select Format. Be sure from the list of choices to select the format you intend to use. In this case, I'm going to be using NTFS format, so I'll select it from the drop down here inside the Format tool. To format the drive, come down to Start near the bottom right corner and click on it. Then at the confirmation window that appears, select OK. It can take a moment to transition your USB drive from FAT32 format to NTFS format. But once the process is complete, you'll see a confirmation window appear on screen. Click OK to close out the confirmation window, and you can close out the format tool from the red X near the right corner of the window. Before I copy game content over to this USB drive, I think it makes sense to show you what kind of content Iris Man can use on your modded PlayStation 3. I have my content staged in a folder called Demo. Folders need to be named in this exact structure. PS2 ISO, PS3 ISO, PSP ISO, and PSX ISO for PlayStation 1 games. For PlayStation 2 games, I have two games staged here that are in .ISO format. Seems kind of intuitive since the folder's named .iso. PlayStation 3 games? Yeah, you guessed it. These are also in .iso format. For PlayStation Portable games, since I couldn't get the UMD disc to fit in the Blu-ray drive, yeah, these are .iso also. PlayStation 1 games are the one exception. Even though the folder's named ISO, Inside here, these are actually in individual subfolders. Take a look inside one of these folders. In this case, it'll be Castlevania Symphony of the Night. You'll see that the game content inside this folder is listed in .bin and .q format. Once you've verified the structure of the folders and files for your game content, you can go back to the listing that has the console names for each of the individual types of content that you want to use. 
I like to drag things from the left side to the right side of the screen. So I'm going to grab the file explorer window with the game content and drag it and drop it over to the left side of the screen and lock it into place. Now I'm going to access the newly formatted NTFS drive from this PC. So from this PC, I'll grab this window and snap it over to the right side of the screen. Then scroll down until the listing for the USB drive is located and then double click into it to access the root of the drive. Now, just like before, all you have to do is grab the content from the left side of the screen and drag and drop it over to the right side of the screen. Depending upon the size of your game files and how many games you're copying, this can take from a few minutes to a while. Once the copy over process is complete, you can close out any open instances of File Explorer in Windows. That's everything that you need to do with your PC. You can transition over to your PlayStation 3 for the remainder of the guide. Remove the USB drive from your computer and insert it back into the rightmost USB port on your PS3. Relaunch Iris Man by selecting it with the X button. This time, you'll see your PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 1 content represented in the main menu of Iris Man. In this example, there are two PlayStation 3 games in ISO format and two PlayStation 1 games in .binq format, and Wing Commander Heart of the Tiger has four total discs shown here. In all fairness, you can launch these games directly from your USB drive, but you know what? We can do better because the internal storage is faster than the external USB ports. To access the Iris Man settings menu, press the start button on your controller. The first listing inside the settings menu is called tools. Select it with the X button. The first listing inside the tools submenu is called file manager. Press X to select it. You'll see a new screen with windows on the left and right side. I like to think of the window as the left side as the from window and the window on the right side as the to window. In the window pane on the left side, you'll need to select the NTFS formatted USB drive you inserted into the rightmost port on your system. To do this, move the highlight down to the listing that says NTFS and select it with the X button. Here, you'll see the folders that you copied over from your computer. In this case, folders representing PS2, PS3, PSP, and PlayStation 1 games. Move the highlight back over to the left window pane with the D-pad. Now you can use the highlight to highlight each individual folder and press the square button to mark it. So I'm going to mark all four of these folders here, PS2 ISO, PS3 ISO, PSP ISO, and PSX ISO. Once you have all of the folders and all of the content that you want to copy over marked, press the triangle button. In the pop-up menu that appears, move the highlight down to the listing for copy and select copy with the X button. You only have to use copy, you don't have to use a separate paste function here as you'll see. Once you press the X button for copy, you'll be asked to confirm if you want to copy over the files from the from location to the to location. See that's why it makes sense to think about these windows that way. Once you've confirmed that everything is set the way you want it, use the D-pad to move the highlight over to yes and select yes to copy the files from your USB drive over to your internal storage. Depending upon how much content you're copying over, it can take anywhere from a few minutes to, well, in this case in real time, a half an hour. Just be patient and grab yourself a cup of your favorite Joe, or maybe go watch an entire feature length film, and it will take care of it for you. Once the copy over process is complete, you'll be taken back to the main screen of File Manager. To exit File Manager, press and hold the select button, and while holding it, press the start button. To get rid of the duplicate listings for your game content, just remove the USB drive from the rightmost port of your PlayStation 3. The ribbon will automatically update. Now you've got all of the content stored on your internal hard drive or internal solid state drive, and all of them are represented, including now PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable games. See, PS3 and PS1 games can be played off of USB, but PS2 and PSP games, at least for the out-of-box experience for Iris Man, only play from internal storage. It's that out-of-the-box experience with Iris Man that I want to touch on next, because if you look through the navigation ribbon here, you'll see that some of the artwork for some of the content, primarily PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Portable games, already have cover art updated, but none of the PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 1 games do. There's a built-in cover downloader inside Iris Man. To access it, press the Start button on your controller. This time from the Settings menu, scroll down near the bottom and you'll see a listing that's called Covers Downloader. Navigate to it with the D-pad and press the X button to launch the Covers Downloader. However, I tested this about 8 different times and in every instance, 
it would get to 0% as though it was going to download covers, but in every instance, it simply locked up the software. The only thing I could do was press the PlayStation button to access Quit Game, select it with X, slide over to Yes, and quit Iris Man and go back to the cross media bar. I would say this function is not 100% dependable at this time, but your mileage may vary. Each of the four types of content has its own unique considerations for starting the games. For PS3, just press the X button on the game. The cross media bar will recognize that the virtual disc is loaded in exactly the same way as a physical PlayStation 3 disc. Just navigate to the disc inside the cross media bar and press the X button. And just like with the PlayStation 3 physical disc, you'll be playing your PS3 content natively on the system. Loading a PS2 virtual disc inside Iris Man works exactly the same. Highlight it and select it with the X button. The first time you launch a PlayStation 2 disc, however, things work differently. When you press the X button, rather than immediately starting the game, you'll be asked whether or not you want to create a virtual memory card so that you can save game data on your system. You probably do, and let me show you how that's done. Slide over to Yes and select Yes with the X button. You'll be prompted to create the virtual memory card. Select OK with X. You'll automatically be taken to the proper spot on the cross media bar so that you can create a virtual PS2 memory card. To do this, select X from the submenu option that appears here. You'll be asked whether you want to create a PS2 or PS1 memory card. In this case, PS2, so select PS2 from the submenu. You'll be asked if you want to rename the card. In this case, internal memory card is usually the default name for all types of memory cards but they'll be marked with a PS2 or PS1 badge, so there's really no need to change this if you don't want to. In this case, I'll just scroll down to OK and select it with X. The virtual memory card for the PlayStation 2 will be created and automatically inserted into virtual slot 1 on your PS3. Press the circle button on the controller twice to go back to the game tab on the cross media bar. Now you can scroll back down to the PlayStation 2 virtual disc and press the X button to launch the disc. And sure enough, not only will your game content play on a custom firmware PlayStation 3, it will also save your saved game data to the virtual memory card inside. Just like with PlayStation 2 games, PlayStation 1 games have their own unique considerations. Highlight the game you want to play and launch it with the X button. I specifically launched the game before going into its settings first to show you that the aspect ratio of the game might look different than you're expecting. In this case, the games are typically set to launch in full mode, which stretches the aspect ratio out from its normal 4x3 aspect ratio to a widescreen mode. Some folks will like this because it helps fill up the display bore. However, if you'd like to run the game in its standard aspect ratio, here's how that's done. With the game highlighted in Iris Man, before you launch it, press the triangle button. Bring the highlight down to the listing that says Video Slash Others and select it with X. You'll see a listing here called Full Screen, Scroll down to it with the D-pad and you can move the green highlight over from yes to no. This will let the game run in its normal aspect ratio. To lock in this change for this specific game, scroll down to return and select it with the X button. Then at the main menu, scroll down to return again and select it with X. You'll be asked to confirm that you want to save these changes. To do this, slide over to yes with the D-pad and select yes with the X button. This will lock in the changes for this specific game. Now, when you relaunch the game, it will be presented in its correct aspect ratio. Now that's something to get charged up about. PSP games also have their own unique consideration. You load the game exactly the same way. Just highlight the virtual disc on the ribbon and press the X button to load the virtual disc. At the cross media bar, you'll see that the generic icon for PSP launcher has now been replaced by your game. Press the X button to launch the game. You'll see two large icons in the center of the screen and PSP Remasters is already highlighted. Just press the X button to select it. And just like that, your PlayStation Portable games will be up and running on the big screen. This is a great project and all, but if you really want to elevate your PlayStation 3 to new heights, check out this guide on installing mana guns on your PlayStation 3 running custom firmware or PS3 HEN. I can't wait to see you over there in that video.